Hello everybody, I am Venomous Pie. You guys know me full well as the Pinkie Pie of the group, and welcome to another episode of Boy Maniacs Discuss. I have with me today our Flood of Shine versus Violet Bloom. I'm still a tired Violet, so don't expect me to really talk properly at times. <laughs> really noted. We have our rarity, Jenna Pan with Danielle. Glam Glam and the Sam Sam. We have our Mod Pie, which is Little Looney. How do you know it's really me? I could be a changeling. I knew there was something bugging me about you. Once <laughs> 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 again. We have our Sunset Shimmer, which is Crimson. The past does not defy me. But my path is not today. Very good. We have our spike, which is Billy Yoshi. You know it's possible any of us could be a changeling. <laughs> wink, wink. Don't trust anyone. Uh, we have our Trixie of the group, which is David. Hello, everybody, pony. How's it going? We have our Rainbow Dash, which is Kanata. Glad to hear you did not forget about me this week. <laughs> I'm never gonna let that down, on I? <laughs> and we have our Twilight nope. of the group, which is Sharpwit. Welcome to another episode of UFC Sucks, where we will talk about edgy changeling of C. Oh, wait, wrong podcast. <laughs> 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 nice one. And we have, we actually have a special guest here today. Please welcome a good friend of ours, uh, J John C Covilo. I hope I pronounced it right. Thank you, the great and powerful Trixie. It's honored to be on this podcast. Wait, if, there, if there's a Trixie here, then the other must be a changeling. <laughs> Mm, yeah, the there's a massive duplication spell. Oh, yeah. Or found a miracle. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Either or. Anyways, uh, the episode we'll be talking about today, as if you can't already guess, it's to change a changeling. A very interesting episode, if I do say the least. And we all know the full deal. We go in a random order, and we name one thing we do like about the episode. Then we will go in reverse for one thing that we don't like about the episode. And after that, we will give our final thoughts. So, up first shall be... You know what, John? Why don't you go first? Oh, well, thank you. Well, let me tell you what I like about the episode. Besides the fact that Trixie's in it. Now, the episode had its uh, ups and downs, but the fact that Trixie kid is more supportive than the, the usual showboating self, that's something I'm really honored about. I like how Trixie is, is now supporting, more supportive to Starlight than, than just caring about herself. That's more like me. No, she still has a trait for that. Yes, she does. That's what I like about it. Um, anything else? The fact she broke the fourth wall. Okay, who do you pass it off to? Um, what about you, David? Big oh, all right. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I'll do my positive. Uh, yeah, it was, um... Very interesting episode, and my positive is that we finally got a new character. Yes. And we always welcome new characters on the show, so that was my positive. And, you know, I don't know if anybody else thinks it, but I thought it was a really good addition. I thought it was a good addition. Yeah, it is all right. I like it. New, new characters are, are always welcome. As long as they actually get some development, either in the introduction episode or later in the episode, instead of being, I don't know, like, introduced and forgot forever. 
Well, I don't, Especially I don't that's think, the uh, important character, like the uh, second in charge of the whole changeling uh, hive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think this new character will, um, you know, be back on the show one day. Hopefully. I hope he will be second in charge of the whole uh, hive, as well as the first in charge of the um, security of the hive. Still. It would make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, um, okay. Pretty well, pass it off to David. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Yoshi if Yoshi's there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Yoshi, go, go on. <laughs> oh, well, I got to admit. Well, first interesting fact is that this episode w had the writer for Honest Apple in it. And I think the vast majority of us remember how that episode went. Yeah. So, the yeah. fact that he was able to write this episode is a major improvement overall. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I was impressed. Yeah, but uh, enough of, about his previous episode. Let's just focus on this one. So, yeah, if there is one thing that I gotta get this episode credit for is, well, I gotta love the backstory that, um, Forax gave with the relationship with him and his brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the fact that every changeling wanted to be the warrior type, because, yeah, that was the old way of living. But I think the one thing that I enjoyed in the backstory the most, baby Forax. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You cannot yeah, say that that wasn't adorable. That was adorable, yeah. Well, actually, technically, they're called nymphs, but... Yeah, the, the changeling nymphs were so adorable. I just have to say this. If anyone out there is a, pl is a plushie maker, please start making Baby 4 Axe plushies. I would love to see one. Me too. Hey, do you guys notice something? What? Sure. When Thor when Baby Thorax was playing, did you notice that one of those little dolls looked a lot like Spike? Yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> I did notice that. That was a good callback. <laughs> really? I thought that was funny. What, you got anything else, Yoshi? Well, I thought it was only one positive and one negative. Yeah, I know. Um, if there's anything else I want to say upon that, is what I meant. Well, yeah, you can definitely see that even though, even though that, um, even though Fair, what, what was the name? Pharynx? Did I say that right? Yeah, Pharynx. Pharynx. Yeah, even though you can tell he's the aggressive warrior type, you can tell that he definitely has, he cares about his brother a lot. He just, just doesn't one of those, you know, isn't the kind to show it. That's true. It, it does, I guess that does make me appreciate the brotherly bond between the two. He shows his love in a different way than a lot of people normally do. Mm-hmm. Alright, so yeah, I'm gonna... I'm done, so... I think I'll pass it off to... I'll pass it to, um... Daniel. Okay. Well, this uh, this is actually kind of a tough one, <laughs> but I'll probably have to say that. Uh, and now I just forgot the I just forgot the character's name. Darn it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ferex. Ferex. Ferex, right. I have to say Ferex is probably one of my favorite. It was definitely my favorite of this episode. Mm-hmm. And just how he... And I'm actually kind of saying I actually found this funny that he actually burned my favorite pony uh, and Trixie, but... Yeah, it's like when he basically just Burned them, saying that calling them losers and stuff after they're hearing like their backstory. I just, I just kind of got a little bit of a laugh out of that. At, and I gotta say this about Ferex. 
He's like the changeling's version of the royal guard, and he's actually a royal guard that is actually useful for something. Well, yeah. I agree. He's, I a, agree. he's actually he's actually a useful royal guard, which is something I thought I never would see in my little pony. <laughs> so yeah, Eric's is definitely really unique. I thought I enjoyed it. You know, got a good laugh out of him and everything. Like he, he's. He's definitely, he's definitely a trainer I would like to see come back more often. Oh, me too. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my positive. Sorry. Um. Uh, who do I pass it off to? Eeny, meeny, miny, sharpie. Um, actually, if I may go last, because I have the uh, negative I want to talk about. As a first, I'll evolve you. Well, you just remember me my mood thing, so okay. Uh, I pick... Lumi. <laughs> Looney or Bloomy? Bloomy. That's what oh. I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> I thought you said me. never... <laughs> it's not the same. Don't blame. Them. You can't blame us. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm too uh -huh. Give you that. Okay, I'll uh -huh. change the subject. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I like about this episode, I have to say, the reason why Ferrax didn't. Uh, didn't transform immediately. Mm, yep, I enjoy that too. I mean, is is it really understand? You get to understand why Eric doesn't like the new changeling way. It's not because he he hates how the hive is going and everything, but it's because he's scared that if he did accept the new way, where does that leave him? Hmm. That's a good point. You know, you know what I kept. I know this is gonna sound a bit obvious, but you know what I kept thinking every time I saw Pharynx? What? He's like half of the entire fandom when it comes to the change in designs. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good Pretty point. <laughs> but, you know, anything else you want to expand upon it, Violet? Yeah, and yeah, it's actually the fact that that is actually backed up with the flashback that Dora mentioned when they were kids, and also is show no tell about how he cares for the hive by actually protecting it instead of just flying away, leaving it in danger. Yep, and joining Chrysalis. Mm-hmm. So yeah, his struggle of accepting the new ways uh, is really relatable. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. So, who do you pass so, off to if you finish? Let's see here. Um, okay, you've done, you've done, you've done, you've done. I go loony. How fitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite part of this episode was definitely the climax. Starting when Starlight gave her inspirational speech to the changelings. I liked it for showing how far along she has come with her character developments and being taken under Twilight's wing. Then, and then when they found failings, finding the, uh, what's the name of that monster again? Uh, uh, I don't know. So that's the the Whatever it was called. Whatever it was called. The battle sequence that ensued was very, very cool and very, very clever at the same time. Telling the monster beat itself up in the same manner that Fairings had done to Thorvax when they were young made for some very good foreshadowing in this episode. Which I find to be a good plus. And that's not even a major Fairings. Fairings is. is fa that's all to say. 
Fairwing says there's Reform Design, which is probably the first Reform team of the design I actually liked. Again, it's because of the color scheme. I don't, I don't have a problem with the designs themselves. The only problem I have is that it's all the colors. That's the only problem. Well, Fairwing says the uh, new design is the only one I actually like. It doesn't bleed my eyes out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But all in all, I would say the uh, ending was a very memorable scene and a very memorable episode. And by the way, uh, Looney, I think I pointed out to you uh, just the other night, and let me know what I thought was the way that they defeat the monster is very similar to how Mr. Incredible defeated the Omnidroid. Maybe it was meant as a reference. <laughs> oh yeah, there was that reference to that where... Pyrex actually reminded his brother and go like, you remember how like we were kids way back? That's when the same thing for how Mr. Incredible figured out the only way to penetrate that thing is itself. Yeah, but I'm actually I'm actually surprised I didn't pick up one right now. I I did. <laughs> so who do you pass it off to, Looney? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna pass it off to. Let's see, who hasn't been yet? Uh, uh, I'll pass it off to you, Venomous. Okay. Um. All right. What I like the. I know that's not a bit redundant here, but what I really like about the episode. What I like about the episode is, has something gotta be different. How they expanded upon the new change in culture. Oh, dang you. <laughs> I like how that that's getting explored. Oh, okay, the changes have all been performed, so they're kind of leading a new life right now. And I love the fact that how that's explored. Okay, first of all, the, how they redesigned the, the hive itself looks amazing. I love how the new hive is designed. And you said that I... I actually found it kind of odd. I think the main reason why I didn't like the change design at first is because, well, for one, the color scheme being too oversaturated. But I think that it's linked to their environment. Like, in something that's like dreary and gray as the old changing hive, that design just felt out of place. But now, since the hive itself is going to be done, it kind of feels a lot more natural now. And when, like when Thor entered Ponyville in a, a triple threat, his design didn't bother me as much. I I believe it is because the environment that they're in. And yeah, I can say for safe that I've actually warmed up to the design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good point you made there, Venomous. Thank you. You're welcome. And, like I said, I love how the culture is being explored. Um, the way they do things now is actually, is actually very interesting. I, up to the point where I want to know, I want to know more. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing to know more about the culture and the backstories and stuff. Yep. And I'm gonna, with that being said, I'm gonna pass it off to... How about you, Kanata? Okay, my positive for this episode is the some of the new designs that we see in this episode. With Thoras turning into that big spider, I liked the, the design of that. The new monster that we kind of saw. I can see, I understand, you know, if some people didn't thought that the design was a little lazy, but I personally liked the, liked the new design of um, that monster. And I, if I may add... That monster is actually based on the real life the mole, with, uh, especially with that uh, nose of it. Yeah. This is exactly how it looks like in the real life, uh, minus the uh, size, because that's in the real life it's a uh, normal size mole. Yep. You know, things actually exist. As a, as a regular mole, yes. Yeah. No, there is the mole with the uh, that uh, weird uh, nose thingy. Yep, just not that big. Yep. And finally, I I loved it. I liked it. Like I liked this Baron's new growth, new changing design. Whenever he decided to turn good, 
it, it was a good middle ground to the people that did not like the new changing design, kind of combining like both the good and the kind of mixing the bad and the good, you know? Because I personally never was never fond of the new changing design, so I was a little scared of how his new design was going to look whenever he turned good and everything. And it turned out a lot better than I thought. I kind of wished others would kind of look like that. Granted, it would be a bad thing because they would all, you know, look alike, so you would have to do something different to kind of separate it, but... The way that he looked, it kind of looked like he was still the. He had that mix of b bad design, changing design, which I personally liked. It so to see that fused with the, the grown up size whenever he, someone turns good, I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I enjoy. I enjoyed that too. And mm -hmm. I, I mentioned this before, Kanata, but I would call someone a DeviantArt. Actually, I made a vector of the new change in design with the older color scheme. And nice. I, and I got lit. I gotta admit, the the new designs with the older color scheme, it looks so much better. It really does. It really does. That, that is. I kind of wish that they stay stick with that design rather than the design that we got. I understand that people like the new design that the change ring has. I know it has grown on some people, but I just can't get past it personally. Hmm. But that's just my preference. I mean, I know everyone's different, and everyone has mixed opinions on it. Some say it's good, some are bad, some are mixed about it. Indeed. But that's all I have to say for Actually, my part. Actually, the Frank's design... Oh, sorry. Go on, chocolate. Oh, did I interrupt you? Because uh, no, no, I was, like about, I was about to say. I was about to say. That's all I have to say for my positives. What were you gonna say, Shopwit? Uh. The fact that I don't, I never know when I when I like that or not. I actually think I what I like. I like the thorax. Phew. What I like in the Phyrex design is the fact that he is very similar to thorax yet visibly different with the size of his antlers and stuff yeah. pretty much how like uh, celestia and luna are alike yeah yeah mm -hmm. by the way remind me who is the older brother in this uh, bro in this sibling um uh, i think that, uh, yeah, yeah. that's actually funny the little brother is actually the big brother yeah <laughs> that's mm -hmm. funny uh, Anyways, um, uh, Shopa, you still want to go last? Oh, I'm last. You want to? Oh, who? Everyone else well before? Uh, just one. Yeah, I prefer to. Okay, then, uh, can I let you can pass it off to Crimson? Oh, and I pass it off to you, Crimson. All right. Let's see. From my positive, this is kind of the first time of me seeing. All the changelings that are the same when they got reformed, aside from one. Mm -hmm. And that is Phyrex, if I got his name right. Yeah, Phyrex. Phyrex. And what really intrigues me even more about this non-reformed changeling, he's being defensive of the hive, and more importantly, he changed into something that was a bit bigger and scarier. <laughs> and I'm like, at a, that kind of age, he managed to pull that off. Hmm. That's impressive. Yeah, it gave me questions, but that kind of gave me the benefit <laughs> to make him my favorite character. It kind of makes me. It kind of makes you wonder if changes could do something like that. Why didn't they? How come they never did stuff like that in the season two finale? Good question. Um, very yes. good question. But still, all in all, that's one of the positives. It got me interested about that, and the best part is he got to fire a giant freaking mole. M matter of fact, wait a minute. Okay, if anyone remembers Kim Possible, how did how did Ron's Rufus get in there? <laughs> oh my gosh, I never thought about that. <laughs> oh 
my gosh. You're yeah. welcome for that. <laughs> you know, you know the difference is that Rufus is not a mole. He's actually a naked mole rat. Which is true. <laughs> yeah, but still, Hello. that was a great reference. I love that. <laughs> Uh, podcast and, points. And what is that? That freaky thing. <laughs> and to make it better, Rufus can actually talk while that one can't. It just roars. Good point. Okay. Passing it off to Big Brother Sharpwit. Thank you. Okay, since uh, Venom took my first team <laughs> positive... <laughs> yeah, not that I didn't expect that uh, someone won't take it. <laughs> Actually, think I'll go with the uh, second uh, positive that is ki kind of connected with the first. How thorax uh, was uh, developed in this uh, episode that we actually see uh, influence he had fr from the uh, Ember that he's much more assertive than he was before. Yeah, like and he like, actually like... still growing as a leader of the Changeling. Like how Leading them to the to the brighter future. Like how and it seems that sorry, go on. Yeah, and it seems that everything is going fine. Well, except maybe with the uh, rebel's brother. That if, but he was the only the, la the brother was the last uh, one that didn't want to uh, change. The other changeling that he talked about in, in the uh, triple threat. Well, they are now good guys. Last one that we've seen, we still don't know if there's more out there. Well, he, like I said, Torak said in this episode that all other rebellious changing were decided to change except the uh, pharynx. Then, okay, I don't count the uh, changeling that are that were outside the hive during the uh, whole Christmas event. Okay, those could as well be a. Uh, Running free and joining Chrysalis. Yeah, that's, that's actually what I, what I was saying. I'm glad that they did not completely change fairings. Like, they kind of, like, like kept, kept him how he is. So, like, I was scared that, that, you know, he was going to, like, that they wanted that they were going to change completely how he is. So, I'm glad that hey, they like, kept Going back to... Sorry. I was going to say, I'm glad that they kept... His personality and how he acted throughout the episode, and that he wasn't, you know, forced to change and forced to be good. It's like, it's like we found like a middle of the way to where he is good, but at the same time, he still has that aggressive personality. I so he's go on. Sorry. So he's basically a bad good guy. Antihero. Yeah. Point. That's yeah. That's what I was saying. Anyway. Because I was talking about Thorax, I can also think that he struggled with, with, with choosing between the whole hive and his own brother. Come on, don't tell me it's not relatable. Yeah, he is his it brother. Is. After all. They are related. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, and everything okay. turned. Oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> okay, let me let me make this quick and we'll be short. Okay, what really confused me, because I understand that Thorax brother, but they're both, like, all in the hive, they're the exact same. Like, which one's, the, like, brother and sister, or are they all just family? Well, that's the different uh, discussion, that technically they were all coming from Chrysalis, so technically all the Changeling are brothers or sisters. Yeah, that, that is what really confused me there. But, any but anyways... Uh, yeah, I think that's all with the positive. <clears throat> a soapbox, if I may ask for? I got it right here. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Alright, so, you all know we all have our favorite ponies. Like, we all say that sometimes we're our best, the best pony is the favorite pony because that and that and that. Mm -hmm. But there are also fans who think like, their, their, their favorite pony is best pony, no matter what, no matter how much they goofed up. And there are also fans who can admit that I, they like their certain character, but, but, he, but that character goofed up in this and this uh, situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know how I like Starlight? I will be proudly the 
mind when it comes to defending her. But for the love of God, Starlight, honey, Mimi, I know you wanted to do good, but do you really have to uh, put it, put the whole hive in danger in order to Ooh. save one uh, one changing who don't maybe don't want to change? Yeah, Starlight really did get struck with the AS6 at that point. Uh, I think I know why. I think she's been hanging around. I think she's been hanging around Rainbow Dash too much. Wow, just. I'm gonna be oh. honest. That's probably something that Twilight would do, probably do. Oh. Oh, that's zero. <laughs> 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 well, hot damn, you're gonna bring that up now. <laughs> you're gonna bring it up? <laughs> Anyways. Uh. So, Twilight will do. I think Twilight might do that. No offense. So, basically, yeah. This was a good case of good idea, bad idea. That was a very bad idea. Come on. Yeah, I know. You, this was a. She, she, she had these struggles like Thorax with, after seeing the backstory, but. This is never a good idea to put it. To put in jeopardy the whole hive in order for the greater good. Yeah. Because that's not the greater good. So, mm -hmm. basically, what you're saying, Shofa, is Sully in this episode is like how rarity was in Spice of Your Life. Yeah. Um, arguably, because I was one of those defending Spice of Your Life. Oh, oh I'll defend, defend Rarity too, but uh, she was kind of an idiot towards the end of the second act. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she was more of an idiot in other episodes, so it's <coughs> kind of before the worst. <coughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, in a, and that's not the only case <coughs> on this <episode>. apple. <coughs> I know, that's true. Good point. Mm. Actually, you know, I see the pattern here. The, main, the same writer who wrote the honest apple. Main character is doing something super stupid. Yep. Yeah. Well, well the, um, the big difference is this episode, this time the episode is much better. Yeah, because Stalin actually, actually. And I say much. Because Stalin actually got called out on it. Yeah, it's just the best. Yep. That, was yeah. the best that was my favorite part. That actually was a good part, Nat. So I forgot to bump my positive. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, negative first. How he actually was angry at Starlight instead of oh, nothing happened, come on, everything turns out. He was actually angry at her. I like that. He was angry at both Starlight and Trixie. Yeah. What? I don't know. I don't know. Trixie didn't have nothing to do with it. It was all Starlight. Why blame Trixie? We'll get to that. I'm sure someone will mention more in a way here. Or not. Mm, I think not. Alright, Crimson? Mm, let's see... For my negative of what part of the episode... Well... I can understand where Thorax... No, not Thorax, um... His brother... Felix. Felix. Yeah, Felix... I can understand where he was coming from, and everyone's just like playing all day two shoes. Like, just because they change now, we're still the changelings and yada yada and all that. I I understand where he's coming from with that, but mm -hmm. it it sounded like from his voice, he may have not sounded like he was afraid of a change, because that's kind of what it felt like. Mm. Like everyone around him, his own kind is different. But him, he stayed the same. It felt like he was afraid if he changed, they might think him differently. Relatable. I can kind of relate to that in a way, because I have been like that in those kind of situations. Mm -hmm. We all have so at one point. Yeah, I can relate. And so far, that's the only thing about it. That's my negative. Alright, Okay, for my for my negative, this is gonna be a small nitpick, but the ending battle 
on the, near the end of the episode was a bit anticlimactic. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, yeah. it, it, it makes sense. It makes sense since we saw the flashback and we saw how Thoas, you know, treated his brother and everything. So it makes sense. I, I, it makes sense when it comes to the plot. But it was just really anticlimactic in the sense of how it ended, you know? Yeah. I mean, they didn't really, you know, destroy the moat or anything. It, it, it was just like, it's just like he accidentally bit it himself and he just retreated. That, that felt a little lackluster, in my opinion. And I get it. it was, the purpose wasn't to make a great battle. The, it was supposed to, you know, kind of like, show, it was kind of like to make, to make, Fairing and his brother Thoras, you know, kind of like closer, you know, the way that they work together and everything, and have and have everyone help help them out to make them feel more accepted and everything. And it, and it worked in that sense, but at, but for a battle, just for the battle itself as a standalone battle, it was disappointing for me personally. Mm, understandable. Mm -hmm. But that's all I have to say for my negative. Alright, so I'm back then. Okay, um... Don't take this the wrong way, but... One of the... Okay, here's how I actually feel about Trixie. Um, she's kind of hit or miss for me. Like, sometimes she can be really good and everything. I mean, case of point, Math is old, even though it's the biggest mistake of her life. I still liked her in that episode because she felt repent, it was outside her control, and it's an understandable behavior from her. So, that was the episode that made me like Trixie. After that, though, she felt kind of hit on this. Like, uh, sometimes she could be very supportive and everything, while other times it's like, Trixie, if you not learned anything, you know where I'm going with this. Like, okay, on the one hand, in this episode, she, she could be very supportive to Starlight, I'll give her credit for that. Yeah. So then her egocentric behavior gets the best of her on quite a few occasions, and it's actually kind of annoying. <laughs> that's what I love about her. Yeah, that's I, mean. I found that aspect of her kind of annoying. And the, the fact that she kind of blames Starlight for all the trouble, even though she also played a part in it, it just felt kind of heavy hooked. She played the part where she just blames the other pony instead of herself for being honest, which she doesn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, I, I didn't really like Tracy too much in that. If you do, then great, but I'm just not a big fan. I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Up until this episode, I've enjoyed every episode that Tracy was in. I've enjoyed all of them. From, from his first appearance, all the way to bottling up your emotions, from bottling up your anger, from earlier this season. This is probably the worst episode for Tritzy, in my opinion. She wasn't bad, she was just meh, you know? There were small good things and, and small bad things that happened throughout to her throughout the episode. Yeah. You know what I don't understand is why sometimes the writers take the characters like Trixie and they make them sort of downgrade. Yeah, that's what I hate about it. You know, why can't they continue making Trixie, Starlight, yeah. you know, yeah. more likable? Like, why do they go backwards? Yeah, she seemed to slip back into old characterization this episode. Yeah. And it felt like they were going, it's like they were just going back to one of the old days instead of just moving ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, don't, I don't like that at all. No, it's, it's, it's not the right direction sometimes. Sometimes. Like I said, that's my thoughts on Trixie. She's very hit or miss. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest, uh, I really liked her in the uh, season 6 finale, but after, but oh, ever oh, since all bottled up, she's going down for me. What? Slowly, but I yeah. I loved her in the season 6 finale. I, 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 I have to bring that back. <laughs> for me, for me, for me personally, Tracy has 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 not had a lot of damage for me in this episode. But this is like the her first downfall for me at, when it comes to her character. For me, because I enjoyed all all of her episodes up until this point. She had some more good moments in this episode, but for them, but she had more misses than hits in my opinion in this episode. So she hasn't done a lot of damage for me for when it comes to her character on my end. But that's just me. 
So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can believe that. She didn't damage the episode too much for me. I'm just not a big fan. I'm, I'm just not a big Trixie fan. Same here. Anyways, Same. anyways um, Looney? Well, you kind of took my negative, Venom. <laughs> that's, the second time this, that's the second time this week. Took mine as well. You just, you, you just like to steal everything in this mm-hmm. episode. Trixie, Trixie, you know, just, you, Trixie just you know, kind of annoyed me too. Me. I've never been that big a fan of her. They say you know he'll be stealing your wife is. <laughs> yeah. uh, I already shipped my OC with him. You better stay- <laughs> Venom, Ven- Venom, I- Venom, I'm just gonna say this. You better stay away from Tritzy, Venom. Yes. Oh, I gotta say. Oh. Um, Venom. Okay, okay. Venom is leave- Venomous. Like, this is when I leave the podcast. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, you don't. You stay away, you David. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Okay, that's enough, but, that's enough, guys. Enough, guys. <laughs> but yeah, Trixie Trix just kind of annoyed me in this episode. She just seemed to let her ego get in her way once again. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a very big fan of her. I just never have been. I, I liked what they did with them. I liked what they did with them in the season six finale, and I want to see more of that, but they just seemed to backtrack once again. I don't, I don't know. I mean,. I kind of liked her in All Bowled Up, because I thought she was kind of funny in that one. But that yeah, I liked her on that one, but not in this one. But that's just me. <laughs> you know what's weird, though? Huh. Well, actually, speaking of which, this is actually the same thing that happened with uh, No Second Francis, if you think about it. Like, that was, like, another thing. Like, I feel as though, yeah, while Trixie is at fault for what she did, I actually have to... You, you gotta understand that everyone in this episode, the main cast, was mainly at fault for everything that happened. It wasn't just one person that contributed to the problem. It was everyone. That's true. There, there was, like, no... Yeah, no one was definitely in the right in this episode, but no one is really in the wrong, either. And, actually, that kind of was to the episode's advantage. Yeah, Venom just kind of said everything that I wanted to say about Twixie, so I kind of left out anything to say here. Okay, Violet. <laughs> okay, my negative. Um. Okay, I have to say that does anyone not find that the story is a little bit predictable? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I in my in my opinion, it wasn't as cliche as the triple thread episode. Yeah. That's yeah, true. that's true. Mm-hmm. And did anyone get a vibe how it was almost incredible's life because they threw many references in there, some of them. <laughs> like, yeah. Like what I pointed out. Yep. Like when Trixie said she'll nominate Starlight. Yeah. She basically, to me, she broke the fourth wall right there. And that's, and that's supposed to be Pinky's job. Yeah, I know. But yeah, that... but where was Pinky Pie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to the main six. Well, Trixie is kind of like Pinky's sister. They did work on a walk for them together. Anyways, uh, continue, Violet. Sure. Yeah, I just find it a little bit predictable. I mean, right from the moment I saw Ferrax art up to the point where, you know, where Ferrax brought Starlet and Trixie to Thorax, I'm like, okay, I have a feeling I know where this is going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, surprise yeah, woman. Yeah, I kind of figured it out, too. <laughs> but I thought it was still a fun ride, regardless. Indeed. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about it, Violet? Nah, I'm good. Alright, uh, Daniel? Alright. Well, my nigga is basically Trixie. Mm. Like, yeah. what was the point of her being in this episode exactly? She wouldn't do much of anything in the episode. Just, just felt like she was just there for just 
comic relief or something. But and, yeah, I mean, about it. And, and seriously, she lifted a rock that did absolutely nothing to a mall. <laughs> yeah. As her magic did not improve. Oh, thick hide. So yeah, Trixie really wasn't. Would it's kind of useless. Good. Yeah, just what was the point of her being in the episode anyway? I think she. I think she was mostly there just for moral support. Yeah. Because you know, probably like another one of the episode's strengths, in my opinion, had to have been the dialogue between Starlight and Trixie. You have yes. to admit it was funny. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it was. It was it I didn't really find anyway. it funny where she just kept passing the blame on the Starlight. It's like, mm. really, Trixie learn Jack. So basically. In other words, Trixie's kind of like Applejack. She didn't learn anything. She was right all along, I guess. Total for teaching go. I think except it was for the fact that this that kind of thing is Trixie in. Did. Well, you know, except for the difference between Trixie and Applejack, is this this is something that would be expected from Trixie, but that yeah. that ending with Applejack, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like Trixie really didn't need to be in this episode, like. There wasn't really any point. I mean, all she she didn't really do much of anything. She, like she wasn't really well, useful in this episode. Well, well, well. Yeah. I think they were, well. I think they are trying to use Tritzy Tr Tritzy more and more and more because in the next season or two, they probably have big plans for Tritzy, so they have to put her in some episodes, even though not all the episodes Ooh. are going to be the best fit for her. They're probably setting her up for something big. Oh, well, I just feel like she's more like Celestia's role guard in this episode. Complete I mean, I understand useless. where you're coming from. I, mean, I understand where you're coming from. Like I said, there's going to be episodes to where Trixie is going to feel like a bit, a bit, bit of a mess, and we all got, we we are going to wonder why was she even in this episode. But I think that Trixie was in this episode because the writers are going to have big, probably going to have big plans for her, so they want to use her more and more often. To get her ready for that moment. Yes. Yeah. I can't it's, wait. I still, wish, I still wish that she would have brought Maude along as well, because that would have been and kind of I, interesting to see how that would turn things out. Oh, that would be interesting. I'd to see Maude. Like, I'd like to that see how, Trixie, how how Maude would interact with the changelings, like, see how they would, yeah. to have, like, see that what would, her thoughts on this would have been. That, that, that would have been interesting to watch. I think Maud would be too OP for that, uh, especially when it comes to climax. She would, she would just oh, kick that whole thing and boom, gone. Good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you say walk. she would have brought her God mod. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my negative. All right, Yoshi. All right, if I gotta be honest here, my negative has to do with the plot. It's, and I have to agree with Dr. Wolf when he said this, yeah, the story itself is rather weak. Mm, it kind of was in a lot of areas. Yeah, I mean, you kind of figured from start to finish what was going to happen. I mean, yeah, he was going to run away, and then he was going to come back to save them, and then it would ultimately result in him getting the transformation. Yeah, I will admit. But the one thing that, the one good thing that did come out of that weak plot, though, as I mentioned earlier, was the dialogue. So it wasn't, it didn't ruin the overall story. It just, um, I, I do wish the story could have been a lot stronger, though. Yeah, me too. In fact, that kind of hurts the episode in a lot of ways. Well, it actually produced a positive and a negative for the episode as a whole. Yeah, kind of did. Fair point. So All right, else? so then, who went up before me? David. All right, yeah. it's David's turn. Yeah. I mean, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, my negative was actually... The plot was kind of, um, eh, it was not that good. Um, you know, it was predictable from the start. Yeah. You know, so I was just like, oh, come on, writers, you know what we're going to catch on. 
Yeah, I, 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 actually, I, actually, actually, the plot, actually, you could say that the plot of the perfect pair, pair could be a, a bit weak, at least when it comes to flashback love story. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's true. As, as soon as I saw Star, I dropped those leaves in front of the I said, oh no, she's did it again. Yeah, yeah. um, yeah, the okay. characters, you know, the, um, the she's, character of, um, Phoenix, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Phoenix. Got to get that name right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, he his voice was sort of offsetting at first, and uh, I was just like, "Wow, what a gravelly voice that character had." But my Did overall you negative was, was that. Phoenix voice actor also voiced Bright Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Let that sink in for a minute. That was weird. And you know what's even worse? That was interesting. I got something yeah. even stranger than that. Mm hmm. What? Is it fan fiction? No. Oh. Please don't be. Is it shipping? No. No. If it no. Got, if it got to let me explain, then you'll know. Did you guys realize that Ashley Ball actually played two of the changelings? She did? Really? Yep. Which two? Which ones? I don't remember which two of them, uh, but I only found it out at, uh, when I saw the end credits. It's an Ashley Ball, changing number two and number four, I think. Oh, how interesting. Well, that's what I mean. They are taking Andrea Libman and Ashley Ball, and they're giving them more roles. Applejack mm. and Lambert Nash are going to have one heck of an identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, I'm Apple who? <laughs> I'm Rainbow what? <laughs> Apple Dash and Rainbow Jack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, um, okay, well, that's my negative for the episode. All right, John, you're the last one. Oh, I did my negative. It's obviously... It's obviously Star and Trixie, not just one separately, it's both. One, Trixie was a scaredy cat, and that really ticked me off. I thought Trixie would be more braver, because as soon as I saw, as soon as I heard her screaming and caught in the back, and she tried to stop quotation spell, I said, come on, Trixie, I know you're better than this. Honestly, 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 it kind of fits Trixie to say that she's not a scaredy cat, but the mo but the moment something happens, she gets scared. It yeah. kind of does fit with Trixie's character to do something like that. So it does fit. And then, but and then Starlight, when she said, and since Starlight saying that tr that Trixie accepts that she's second best, I mean, what? Why would Trixie be second yeah. best? Come on. Oh. Actually, I, think, I actually think it's kind of funny how Sully mentioned the quirks that both she and Trixie had and how they moved on from that. I'm like, eh, what about the whole, you know, except the fact she's second best and everything. Yeah, that, 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 that to me, that's not true. I don't eh. think she's second best. Eh, no, she I think Starlight is second best. No, she doesn't. And Sully, uh, about, about the fact that you moved on from your king. Um, every little thing she does has given a call, and you would like to speak otherwise. Yeah. Star always screws everything up. At least she isn't using magic this time. Yeah, yeah that's good. I'm that, glad Trixie is uh, using her magic more. Yeah, I, yeah, that's the best. Yeah, Trixie is using her magic. But the best part was when I saw Trixie say, when I saw Trixie, when Starlight said of the chain that that thanks is gone, and then Trixie said, "Wait for it," I said, "Oh boy, here we go, four four, here we go." <laughs> I just told you so. I love that. That was one of the few good lines from Trixie in this episode. Oh yeah, yeah. that was my, that was the best line. That was the best line, Trixie. I still love Trixie to this day. I just hope they keep Trixie with the good one-liners. Oh, yeah, yeah. The good one-liners. And hopefully one day she'll surpass Twilight. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I, hope um, I, I, I highly doubt that because I wouldn't count, already did. I wouldn't count on that happening. I wouldn't you know. 
Tricky, you stole my chair. Bring it back. Huh? No, no, Trixie, Trixie has a nice ring to it. Never! Trixie will take Twilight's chair. <laughs> and I will sit in it. And anyways, um, let's get to our ratings right now. So, um, John, what would you give the episode? I'll give it a 7 out of 10. If it's good, but still could use some more development. We're going so with 5. Eight, so we have a 5 star system. So three three point five out of five. So three yes, point five, five out of five, in other words. Yeah, basically. Three and a half. Mm. Huh. Alright. Three and a half it is. Uh David. Okay, uh my rating would be mm, four out of five. Okay. Alright. You wanna expand upon that or no? No, just the rating, that's that's good. Okie dokie. Uh, Yoshi? Alright, alright, before I say it, I just got, I wanted to add this on to the previous conversation. Honestly, I have a new fan theory. Trixie is afraid of changelings. Uh, yeah, we kind of realized that. Yeah, especially if you well, saw her freak well, out. Especially well, if you well, saw her freak out in the season 6 finale. Well, yeah. to, well, well, to be fair, to be fair, this is probably the first time that she's seen changeling, so she's not exactly used to seeing changelings. So, yeah. yeah, it's like move over wheels, she's no longer, it's like move over wheels, it looks like changelings are the new phobia. <laughs> yeah. I still, yeah. I still recall the scene how Trixie be asking to see a thorax for the first time. <laughs> that is still, yeah. that, that I remember. really funny. Yeah, yeah, I kept yeah, freaking out in that bubble. Yeah, that was So funny. she's either afraid or just racist. <laughs> oh, 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 no, 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 no. Oh. Don't, no. no okay, don't, don't go there. Don't go there, Sharp. Okay, first off, don't go there. Second, technically it's not racist, it's eat this. There's a difference. <laughs> But anyways. Alright. But anyway, final thoughts. This episode was actually really great. I got to an the episode did have a weak plot and it was pretty predictable. I still enjoyed the dialogue that was given throughout the story, and honestly, who doesn't love seeing Forax and Pharynx as nymphs? I mean, that is just adorable. Yeah, that was that was cute. Yeah, it had a lot of cute moments, funny moments, and I was actually satisfied with the ending. Also, if anyone hasn't commented, I have to admit, Fer Pharynx's design is a lot better than Forax's. Yeah, to me, it looks dis Absolutely. It looks like it's Absolutely. Yeah. It's discounted Forax. Yeah, yeah cuz it feels like Pharynx's design would actually fit, would naturally fit with him. I Yeah. I just did not expect when Forax changed it's like really? That's what he would look like? Yeah. 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 Something actually hits me. I don't like the antlers. I just don't want the antlers. Take the antlers off. Why the hell? No, I am not used to the design. I don't like those antlers at all. Mm. Forax. Yeah, you got to say something to help it's something actually hits me. Don't you think they kind of look like with the uh, same kind of the uh, design of brothers uh, who are in charge of something like with the um, Celestia and Luna? You know, the little brother is darker, big big brother is uh, brighter, yeah. just like Celestia yeah. and Luna. Not to mention yeah. the same kind of monarchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We know Felix is the big brother. Forks is the little brother. Yeah, that's, that's so it's opposite. Right. That's the yeah, there's, right. a, there's a difference, of course. Like I mentioned, big brother is the little brother. Yeah, my final verdict is a, is a 4 out of 5. Okay. Alright, uh, Daniel? Four and a half out of five. Really? Hmm. What, were you expecting me to give it a five out of five? No. But, no. No, but you'll no, get so Get so many four out of fives already. Alright. Uh, you want to say anything else?
No, not really. Alright, Violet? I would give it a four and a half. Okay. I mean, but, I like the... I like the plot and everything. It's just a little bit predictable, but eh, it doesn't distract from me enjoying the episode, so... It didn't for me either. No. It wasn't a distracting episode. Looney? Well, Trixie may have gotten on my nerves just a little bit. Uh, the things I liked about this episode far away, uh, the epic climax was pretty awesome. Uh, I liked Fairings as a character, and I also thought his reform design was absolutely amazing. And this episode also uh, gave us uh, my new favorite quote, Why are you hating yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How come no one's brought that up yet? Why are you hating oh, there, yourself? There you go. Why are you hating yourself? Why are you hating yourself? Uh, the reason is, is because I keep hitting myself. <laughs> uh, I fell down, oh, and then okay. helps. Ow! Kind of actually, this episode kind of actually thinks kind of reminds me of me a little bit because uh, oh, I can't talk about it right now. He's healed. I lost my cookie. My brother's healed, so kind of reminds me of me picking on my bro. <laughs> it's all but yeah, anyway, time. anyway, I would have to give this episode a four and a half out of five. Uh, number four, out of, number four out of five, waiting. This is gonna be interesting, kind of a bad. Oh, I did. This is it's a change lines. My mom. If I may. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give this episode a four out of four out of five. But I, best wow. Way, best way I can sum up this episode is it's good but not great. Right. It was still good though. I still enjoyed the episode. I still got entertained in a lot of areas. Some more than some areas more than others. It was funny. I like. I enjoyed it. It was actually pretty funny. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. It's just not. Trixie really did. I don't know. I have to. I enjoyed it. It's just not that great. At least to me. Well, you know what? The the season's not over yet. So. You know. Yeah. That's true. We still got plenty of ways to go. Yep. And uh, by the way, this is episode number 17 of the season, and it actually turned out good. Yep. So yeah. So that's it's true. Anyway, so Kanata? Well, I'll put it in the case. I'm going to give this episode a... I'm going to give this episode a three and a half out of five. Okay, okay sounds fair enough. Interesting. There we go. Ten out of ten. Four out of five. And the reason for that, the backstory of Thorax and his brother could have been explained a lot more better. <laughs> yeah, could have. Could have, should have, would have. Mm-hmm. Just didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, four out of five. I like this the episode itself. I like the development for Thorax. I like the the fact that it developing changing instead of like introducing introducing them like as a new a new species and then not developing for them for like seven seasons. <coughs> Zebras. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> However, Trixie. No, Trixie is a mess for me in this episode and Starlight. Starlight, you know I would be, I would, I'm the first to defend you. I've defended you in the uh, every little thing she does, but you really goofed up this time. <laughs> yeah, I would have defended her too. Yeah. She goofed up big time. Even Trixie said it. I mean, Twilight should have been there in the episode and said, "Hey, smarten up." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then, but then Trixie would go and uh, try and uh, get on your nerves. Try to get on Twilight's nose, and then I will be. I would be ever. Uh, to be honest, I do love it when Trixie gets on Twilight's nose because it's kind of a like payback. Mm-hmm. I, I started. I started to bring that up earlier that uh, Twilight should have been this episode. She could have yeah. kept Trixie in check. Anyways, um, no. I did the math here, and our overall group rating for to change a change lane is. Oh, this is gonna be a shit show. Let's go. A four out of five. Predictable. Yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Just a lot of force. 
Give me some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there a single rating lower than a four? Uh, two. Two. Yeah, John and Kanata. You know what's funny? The the two people that gave it a three and a half out of five are the, the two biggest Tritzy fans in the entire in the entire panel. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty funny, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty yeah. ironic. That is ironic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's all right. Anyways, um, thank you all so much for joining us here this afternoon. So Tune in next week where we cover Darren Dunn. Absolutely. Darren Dunn, that's right. No spoilers. So I actually have the episode on my computer right now. No spoilers! So, and, anyways, uh, d yeah, tune in next time. We'll be coming down, down, done. And we'll all see you next time. Peace. Tripsy's great, powerful, best body ever. Bye. 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 Bye, you pair of screw heads. <laughs> 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 and powerful, too, Ixie.